When it comes to capturing slow motion video, did you know that there's actually two different ways to do this on most modern Sony cameras? In this video, we'll cover the differences between shooting slow motion natively versus using Sony's S and Q mode. Welcome back to Alpha Universe, and this video is one that I've been meaning to make for a long time. When you wanna shoot slow motion video, there are actually two ways to do it, each with their own pros and cons. The first way is to use what Sony calls S and Q mode, which stands for slow and quick. I have the Alpha 7R5 here, and in S and Q mode, you can shoot anywhere from one frame per second, which basically gives you a time-lapse style video, all the way up to 4K 60p video. The benefit to this mode is that you're able to record your video and immediately play it back in your camera in slow motion. When you get back to your computer to edit your video, the clip is already in slow motion, so you don't have to make any adjustments in post-production to slow it down. With that said, the downside of using s and mode is that you can't do any kind of time remapping, which we'll talk about more in a few moments. It also doesn't capture audio, so if you wanted to capture audio while recording in slow motion, it won't be an option using this mode. On other Sony camera models, using s and typically results in a lower bitrate file compared to shooting native slow motion, so it's something that you'll wanna keep in mind. When it comes to shooting native slow motion video, you have an entirely different workflow with its own benefits and downsides. On the Alpha 7R5, you could shoot 4K 60 footage natively, which is pretty awesome. And even devices like the Xperia 1 Mark IV, they can natively shoot 4K video in 60 frames per second, and you could even go as high as 120 frames per second natively. Just to clarify before we continue here, when I use the word native in terms of the footage that's being captured, this just means that you're actually capturing 60 individual frames each second. When you take that footage and you drop it on your 24p timeline and let's say uh, Adobe Premiere, for example, the video will play back in normal speed until you modify the playback speed. I made an entire video showing you how to do this step-by-step, step, which I'll link for you at the end of this video. At any rate, shooting 4K 60p video natively has the benefit of giving you a higher quality video file. And because you're capturing those frames individually, you could do some really cool tricks in post-production such as time remapping, some people call it speed ramping. This is where you take that 4K 60p footage and have it play back at various speeds to get some interesting effects. This little boxing montage was filmed on the Xperia 1 Mark IV, and as you could see, you could speed up and slow down specific parts of the video, which is something that you can't do when you're filming in s and mode. The downside to filming native slow motion footage is that the file sizes are usually much larger than if you recorded in s and mode. You also don't get the benefit of playing back your footage in camera to make sure that the slow motion footage looks the way that you want it to look. You do, however, get the benefit of capturing audio along with the footage, which is a great bonus. Now, which way do you typically shoot slow motion? Let's talk about that in the comments section below. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe as we have new videos releasing every week. I mentioned earlier that I made a video talking about how to work with 4K 60p footage in post-production. And here's the video that you'll wanna check out after taking your own test footage. Hope it helps you out and I'll see you there.